Good evening, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my story with you all this evening, which is very different to Sophie's because <laughs> my story began before the internet or even mobile phones or even thought of. So it's very different. Entrepreneurs get inspiration from different experiences. Well, my experience actually started in my kitchen at home. And since we don't have an awful lot um, of time, I'm just going to focus on three things today. First of all, how the idea of the business was conceived. Secondly, my learnings from it, and hopefully they will help you too. And thirdly, some of the factors that helped to make the Authentic Food Company a success. I was 35 years old, uh, married with two young children, working as a full-time teacher. Very comfortable lifestyle, no intention really of looking for another career. Until I paid a, a visit to my local supermarket, my weekly shop. And when I got to the supermarket, I saw on the shelf some ready-made samosas. Now, I don't know if any of you have made samosas, but they are very time-consuming and quite complicated to make. So to see them on the shelf in the supermarket was wonderful for me as a working mum. So I bought some and took them home. As soon as I tried them, however, they went straight in the bin. They were so poor in taste. And at that moment, I thought, well, I can do a lot better than this because I'd always had a passion for cooking. It's something that I'd enjoyed. So I thought, well, I'm going to give this a go. And I think at that time, my gut feel was, I know I can make this work. And a lot of the time in my business, I have gone with gut feel. Sometimes, I, I, I mean, at this time, I was totally naive about business. I didn't know very much about what was involved in business, let alone the food industry. But sometimes I think it's easier if you don't know what the challenges are that you're going to face. Otherwise, maybe you would never even start. But how do I start? I'd got this idea, but how was I going to start? So I thought, well, obviously, I can't go all the way and start a big business. So what I did, I went and spoke to my local delicatessen and asked if they would sell my samosas two days a week, Friday and a Saturday, which were their busiest days. So I was still working full time. So on a Thursday and a Friday evening, I used to put the children to bed and then make 24 samosas in the evening and deliver them into the delicatessen the following morning. It was the consistent sale of the product which actually gave me the confidence to say, yes, I can do it. This product is selling, so I should take it to the next stage. But before you can start any venture, you're going to need money. And so I had to go and see the bank manager, and I went with some trepidation, I have to say. But when I got there, he agreed that if, that if I put an investment in, he would match it. So our savings of 5,000 pounds went into this investment of the Authentic Food Company. And he matched that investment. And that enabled me to go from my kitchen at home to a small site about 900 square feet. And another thing which I did at this time was because I knew nothing about the food industry, I got the local EHOs involved. I called him in and asked him to give me some basic information on food hygiene and also to give me a little bit information on the layout of this big room that I'd got. And if you can imagine, at this time when I started, I had one gas ring, two little fryers, 24 by 24 inches, one table and one sink. And this room, I was wondering how I was ever going to fill it. It was quite daunting. Well, I made a start, and in the first week, as Emma has said, I made 200 samosas and bhajis and delivered them in the back of my car to my only customer. Today, we have two sites. We, um, uh, we employ 250 people. 
We manufacture now nearly a million meals a week. So how has that come about? What have been some of the learnings from this? Well, the first thing for a working mum, organise your children. I soon realised that not only was I not working school hours anymore, but I, didn't, I wasn't going to have school holidays either, if any holiday at all. So organising the children was a priority. And for some of you, you think kids' clubs are the norm. Well, they didn't exist in those days. So that was a priority for me. The other thing was, do everything yourself. It's a big learning. I learned to buy second-hand <coughs> food equipment, source raw materials, and actually go and buy them because nobody would deliver to me because I didn't buy enough quantities at that time make the product myself, and then deliver it to the customer at the end of the day. And nothing is too menial. You even have to do all the cleaning. So accept that from the beginning. Another piece of advice I'd give you is don't listen to other people. <laughs> My parents thought... After having a good education, being to university and so on, what the hell was I going to be doing making samosas? What had my education been about? And then one of the first customers uh, retorted to me, if anybody wants to buy Indian food, they'll go to the Indian restaurant. Why would they want to buy it in a pub? How wrong he was. Because chicken tikka masala today is as prevalent on pub menus as fish and chips. Of course, we all have our low days. I had many. I can recount one straight away in the very early days. It was a bank holiday Monday, and I came in, and the chiller had gone off. So all the vegetables were ruined. I had to go around every greengrocer in the area. Remember, in those days, we didn't have as many supermarkets either. And buy up all their stores of potatoes and onions and everything else. Peel them and prepare them and cook them myself. And that was a hard way to learn that customers are not really interested in the issues you have. They want that delivery on time. That's the key. The service levels are so important. So those were the learnings. But what were the reasons for some of the success that we had in our business? Well, first of all, <coughs> target your market. We knew that we were not going to supply the retailers. We didn't have the money to invest in a big facility. And we couldn't, certainly could not cope with the volumes that they would require. And we were not going to supply the Indian restaurants either, because they had the expertise in-house. They didn't want to outsource any of their production. So who were we going to target? Well, our target was going to be pub groups, ferries, universities, where people didn't have the expertise to cook Indian food. They wanted to buy it in, heat it up in the microwave or the oven, and serve it to their customers. And that is the market that we targeted. And although that, was th that is the food service market, and that's how we started, we do supply retailers now. We do both. But one thing that enabled us to do was that our business was well spread. We were not relying on any one customer at any one time. And also, it enabled us to grow as we could afford it. We never over leveraged the business. We put back into the business what we could afford, and we grew it very gradually. But the three biggest assets and the biggest reasons for our success are our people, our products, and our customers. Our people have the same passion for food as we do, as I do. We have 25 nationalities, and we respect every nationality that works for us. Our products, we produce the very best in the marketplace. Our customers, they're our number one priority. 
hence a mission statement. Love our people, love our products, love our customers. I would just like to say one other thing that Emma asked me to, to mention to you today. Last year, I won Asian Entre Woman Entrepreneur of the Year Award. And she said, what did that award mean to me? Two things. First of all, it meant that the hard work of 25 years was finally recognized. But more important than that, it meant that in this country, opportunities are available for everyone. It doesn't matter about your gender. It doesn't matter about your color. It doesn't matter about your class. I am testimony to that. Thank you.